welcome um, today uh, the topic really is port address translation otherwise known as NAT overload now what is NAT? NAT is of course network address translation uh, the method that allows the translation or modification of IP addresses while packets are traversing the network NAT overload also known as port address translation or PAT is essentially NAT with the added feature of TCP and UDP port translation. The main purpose of NAT is to hide the IP addresses, usually the private IP space. So for example, this 192.168.172.16.10.10 is in the private space here. And on the outside, we have the public IP address. Okay. Now, um, what, is, what I have here may seem like a local IP address, but assuming that this is the one facing my um, ISP or my ISP router, this is my public interface, okay? So, um, the main purpose is to hide um, uh, the, the private IP address space behind that public routable IP addresses. Now, let's go through the steps in creating um, a NAT on the NAT router uh, to translate um, addresses across. Um, I have configured uh, all these interfaces with IP addresses of dot one, dot one for all these private IP spaces. And so when I go to router one, so router one, and if I go here and I do show run interface, and the interface number I want to go to is F0 slash 1. You will see that I have configured an IP address, which is the gateway for this device here, this computer here, slash 24, and I've given it a secret code, IP NAT inside. Now, I don't need to type this because the moment you put IP NAT inside, it, it does virtual reassembly because the packets have to translate and come back in. All right, so IP NAT inside. Now, when I go to that PC1, which is in that in that subnet uh pc1 pc1 guys help me here pc1 when i go down here and i and as you can see that's the ip address of my gateway the one the one here and that's my ip address of the device dot hundred over there when i go and i do ping for example 8.8.8.8 .8 okay it pings all right it translates all right okay um then let's do a proper DNS ping, okay? So let's ping a fully qualified domain name or domain or something. Why don't you do hotmail.com, for example? And here we go. So hotmail.com is resolving. Um, I may have a few dropouts, but it's DNS3. You don't expect too much from it. Um, then when I go on the router itself and I say show IP uh, NAT translations, now, when I do IP NAT translations, it says that there was a NAT from 192.168.10.100, which is the device here. And that NAT uh, request was going to 888 and over ICMP. But then, over ICMP, as you can see here, but then the interface that was facing the internet is 192.168.122.115. But here it has, it has a port number here. 50160. Um, the same time, the next one is 72928118496. So that is just this guy here. So this guy here seemingly has this IP address with two port, a colon and a port number. What about this guy, PC2? Let's go to PC2 and see if he can also ping Hotmail. Let's try and ping something else, maybe. Um, ping gmail.com so I can ping gmail.com and the IP address for gmail is 172.217.169.69 so when I go to uh, my router again and I do show IP net translations I see that um, 20.101 yeah it's the 20.101, that's 20.101. It's pinging 172.217.169.69, which happens to be Gmail. However, I'm still showing 
as 192.168.122.115. Okay, so you can have multiple um, uh, private IP addresses or subnets behind your router or firewall and still be able to go via this across to the internet. In the old days, people would have a number of these and would do match this to one of them, match that to another one of them, match that to another one of them, and create a pool and use that. But these days, this is the best way. So port address translation is using this public facing routable IP addressing and passing this this subnets which are private and not routable um, across as that but with sockets. So two columns uh, or a column and then and then uh, um, service service or port number and so in short this hard works now let's go to pc number three again uh pc number three and pc number three um let's ping yahoo.com let's ping it's dns Still no joy. Why? Let's go on router to find out. The interface facing that, um, let me just minimize that you see, is interface F20 as you can see there. So when I do conf, I can do sh uh, show run interface F20. And there you go. There's no uh, NAT translation in here. You know, so nothing has happened. You don't see virtual assembly, but when I do F1 to zero, you see I've got the IP NAT inside, and of course IP virtual re reassembly is working there. So let's apply the same interface F2 slash zero. I'm gonna do IP NAT inside. Copy run start. Now when I go back to PC3 and I ping this again. I'm already it's working, you see. So what are the moving parts? Let's round this up now. So here are the moving parts. Um, your inside local addresses, which are non-routable, will have an IP NAT inside on the on their gateway, so their interface, or so the VLANs where where these subnets reside. And then the interface facing your ISP. Your home router or your your corporate router would have IP NAT outside saying I want translations to happen here using the same IP address which is routable in the network on the internet and that is my inside global address and just apply some port numbers and change them for all these guys so all these networks can be seen as one but yet when it comes back in it will reassemble with the port numbers and send it back to the right place so hope this is good for you um, let me just put the config in here for you what we configure on the router so on the router you configure your um, IP NAT inside and outside for the interfaces inside and outside and then so outside and inside and then you configure your assets list saying I want to permit the subnet on the submit the subnet the subnet and then finally you, you put a magic word IP NAT inside source the list is list 7 the interface that is facing outside is first not not and then the keyword is overload overload not overload so I hope this has been good for you um, thank you for viewing and by all means um, share like subscribe and if you have any questions do ask me but I hope this really helps you um, Maybe finally I'll show you how it looks like on the router itself and then we can part our ways. So on the router, um, show IP NAT translations. Now there's nothing happening because it's all gone, but to clear translation, you declare IP NAT translations and then you do a star here. So that will clear all the translations. Let's, for good measure, let's just ping something here. Um, PC1, PC2, let's ping this and do a, a minus T. Now when I do show IP net translations, okay, sometimes it does that. 
just remove the T for now and then just try this force it to get the first. Now with GNS3 sometimes you have issues, yeah you see it works, there's no, nothing wrong but GNS3 sometimes these VPCs are not the best. So when I do show and there you go, so that works fine, yeah. So what's the command? Show run and the command interface facing inside, not inside as you can see. Interface facing outside, not outside. And all those interfaces facing inside, okay? And then you do your IP nuts first you access list, match the subnets you want to allow to go across fast Ethernet 00, zero with the overload and then apply the access list. So thank you for viewing and do subscribe. I hope to hear from you. If you have any ideas or you want to share some experiences, feel free to comment below. Uh, see you on the next one. Thank you and bye.